Okay. Warm, isn't it? Oh, Lee, what an what a extended summer. Um, but anyway, welcome everyone. And uh, my name is George Neo. Um, and the topic tonight is Visions of Utopia, New Blueprints for Humanity. So where does all that information come from? Well, that's what I'm going to describe tonight. There's lots of information, and I hope I can get through it. Um, there's a poster which we've been using um, over the last month describing what we've been doing at Magpie House. So I'll just go back to the Magpie House. Yeah, for those who don't know, um, I run the uh, Magpie House Holistic Centre in Upway. And that was set up six years ago as a consciousness raising tool. Uh, it's also got a yoga school. Um, and as far as the healing attributes are concerned, uh, we talk about um, embracing the intention of not seeking to heal nor change anyone but to empower them to heal or change themselves. And so that's one of our main um, attributes of what we're doing. Uh, going on. Now, this is, a, this is actually at the very end of the presentation. Now, don't worry about the fine print. Um, it's a meditation which I hope to get to if we get enough time. But just in case we don't, I'll tell you about it. This is one of the first movies we ever showed at the Magpie House. Uh, you know, we've been showing movies for about six years. We've had world-class presentations. And this one, particular one, is a channeling um, related to what's called Earth Changes and You. you know, there's there's a, a lot of information out there about Earth Changes. Um, but the channeling actually says, well, what are you all worried about? Change has always happened on planet Earth. Why are you trying to resist it? Right? Get out of this fear mode of trying to resist the change. You know? I think uh, mainstream society is still under that mode. And now we've got more and more taxes and carbon taxes and you know, who, who else knows what. All to try and keep things the way they are, which is impossible. Um, well, a bit of the yoga school there. Uh, some of my earliest inspirations going back 30 years uh, are the Castaneda books, the, um, uh, being described as the books of the century. And some of the, the quotes um, I'll read out. Uh, Not wanting anything is a warrior's finest attainment. That's, that to me is one of the highest uh, teachings. So, and it comes through in many um, uh, philosophies, you know, many spiritual philosophies. Uh, and I did set up the yoga school at Magpie House and um, one of the, um, uh, the sayings from the books is, well, you must stretch your body many times during the day, the more times the better, but only after a long period of work or a long period of rest. And it's very important to be in good shape. Uh, we, we, we should all know that. You know, we watch cats and dogs stretch, and we, we're supposed to be more intelligent, and yet we disconnect ourselves from, um, let's say, the, the instinct part of us, ourselves, yeah, to our intelligence. The, the big, one of the big reasons, which also came from the same books, is that <coughs> um, why we need to be in, in good shape is to navigate in a genuine way into the unknown, whatever the unknown might be, a sorcerer has to be extremely sober, cautious, skillful, and in superb physical condition. Yeah, so it does pay to be in good shape if you're going to be exploring these other realms. And there's a lot of people who are up here, in all in the celestial, right? But they're not grounded. You know? You've heard of the term Head up, head up in the clouds, well, perhaps we need to get grounded as well. Right? And then there's the other extreme, there's a lot of people who are all, all focusing on the lower 
chakras. You know, the, um, the, the first three chakras uh, couldn't relate to food, sex, and money. Um, and we need to activate all those to experience the full human condition. Okay. One of the other initiatives that we're, we've started up through Magpie House, um, we, we do have um, quite an acreage of land up on the New South Wales type tablelands uh, uh, set up for our community initiative. Which might kick off one day, um, but to create uh, that initiative, it's going to take a lot of work, from what I can see. Now, I've got quite a few examples I'm going to show tonight, which um, demonstrate that. You know, there's a few videos which we can refer to. Um, the part of the driving force is to uh, work with vision, and the quote which I really love here, is vision without action is a daydream, but action without vision is a nightmare. You know? um, that's uh, very close to the, um, uh, the conversation with God recommendation as a tool of creation. It's thought, word and deed. Right? Uh, if you have any one of those elements missing, then the creation process is... Um, is lacking uh, and incomplete. Right, so the missing one from um, the Japanese proverb here is um, word. Uh, and word to me implies co-creation. It's about uh, collectives working together. Right? If you try and do something on your own, you've got very, very little power, very little momentum. And from what I can see, we need to get together. That's what community is about. It's a commune. It's common unity. And we'll go into that a little bit deeper. Oh, up in our land, it's actually 701 hectares. It's pretty big, 1,734 acres. And um, if you're familiar with Reem Cedars books, uh, they recommend one hectare for a family unit. And this shows about 10% of the land, right? And so we've got about 40, 50 domains and just 10% of the land if, if that's what we want to do. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the rest of the land, well, a lot of the land is actually a very wild country uh, and, and there's great uh, prospects for ecotourism. There's two gorges and a, even a 30 metre waterfall. Uh, but I'll go on from there. Now, I've done a, a very similar talk to this one uh, last year in September at the Bandajan Intentional Community Conference. And uh, the Bandajan community has been established about 25, 30 years. Um, and as you can see, it's on the coast and um, it's an instant paradise. Right? That's why so many people are attracted to it. Uh, and it's actually too popular because they've, they've actually closed their doors. They won't allow anybody, anybody else in uh, because one of the reasons is it's, it's, it's becoming a, a little bit of a fire hazard being in, in the forest and I understand the authorities are trying to crack down on them. Um, to me there's already too much coastal pressure and everybody wants to go to the coast. Uh, and one of my interpretations of reading Cedars is it's actually inappropriate for us to invade areas of wilderness. Right? You're actually disturbing the ecology when you do that. Uh, <clears throat> and yet, uh, well, reading Cedars from Russia, and both Russia and Australia have got vast areas of marginal lands. And uh, if we want to fulfil, say, our divine purpose, um, according to what the books tell us, then it, uh, we could say that we're here to multiply life, not destroy it. Right? And so we are the only creature on this planet that can um, rehydrate a landscape, for example. 
you know, no other creature can do that. Um, and so we can explode biodiversity through these marginal lands. Now that raises the issue about um, with big populations and big cities, I'll go into uh, why there might be a problem. Uh, in the future, perhaps we need to depopulate the cities. And the question that comes up, well, what are we going to do with all these people? There's so many of them, and, and, they're, and they're so concentrated in the big cities. Well, uh, again, Russia and Australia have got vast areas. Right? And if each family has one or two hectares, uh, you'll be able to accommodate everyone in, in a more um, sustainable environment. And I'll go into that. Uh, a couple of sayings that I've written up here. And these are very important. Uh, your life is a magic trick and you are a magician. Well, that's what vision um, or thought, word and deed produce. It's all your actions start with a thought. Right? If you don't have the thought there, then the action is a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> And then another saying from Dan Millman. We know Dan, Dan Millman from Peaceful Warrior. Uh, magical thinking becomes a problem when people expect to manifest their desires and dreams without that intermediate step of working towards it. Right? So what I'm saying there is uh, don't have any illusions about uh, if you want to set up a more sustainable world and with sustainable uh, self-supporting communities, there's going to be a lot of work involved. Right? Um, that comes out in so many experiments with intentional communities. Uh, even Bandaja, um, I know that uh, they've had a lot of difficulty uh, in their early years and they've ended up with a huge rule book. And that was necessary right? because there was no control. Right? Now, but there is a way to avoid the big rule book, and that's to raise consciousness, raise awareness. And so, um, from my point of view, the, the human race has to learn how to get on with each other, and it certainly doesn't do that at the moment. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you have to get on with Sorry? You have to get on with yourself before you can get on with anyone else. Cool. Yeah, what's a good see, place to start? Start with yourself. Seeing others is a reflection of what you've got to fix in yourself. But if you can't do that, then you're not going to change anything around yourself. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, start with yourself. I totally agree. All right. I've got a DVD of the, the speeches that I gave at the Bandage in the conference. Um, it's that one there. And they asked me to talk about spiritual, spirituality as a basis for sustainability. And uh, the talk that I did as well was, is there a divine purpose for humans and why should we settle for anything less? Right? So what I'm saying is, um, set your goals high. Right? Why would you want to settle for anything less? And it does mean uh, we're going to have to apply ourselves and do some work. Uh, this is also one of my earliest inspirations, um, Mind Over Matter by Ron and Jill Anderson, who um, can still live in South Australia. It's one of the most powerful books I've ever come across, uh, and I came across it 30 years ago, and it still remains possibly the most powerful book I've ever come across on, on these higher subjects. Um, one thing... Um, well, it's mind over matter. The mind is so powerful. Use the power of your mind, but do, but do not be corrupt. For the mind is an all-powerful thing and can equally destroy as construct. Right? So the mind is a very powerful tool, just as technology is also a very powerful tool. And there's a lot of um, drive to create a technological society. But if it's, if it's devoid of spirituality, it's like giving matches to the child. That makes sense? Yeah. If you can't have a, um, a te highly technological society without spirituality. 
In fact, some stories that I've come across recently um, which seem very credible, which talks about the extraterrestrials and their spaceship propulsion systems, they say it runs on love. Right? It doesn't work, work if it's anything less than love. Uh, but that's a different topic anyway. Um, one of the powerful statements from um, this book is, remember it was written in the 1980s, early 1980s, you will find that the arrival of a new awareness will be like a magnetic tide, gathering followers as it flows and eventually sweeping right in. Right? And that's obviously happening. Right? We can see that happening. And back when I read this, uh, there was almost zero evidence of this sort of movement. Um, in fact, um, I had to keep this information to myself for about 10 years. I could not communicate to anyone about these, these concepts, these higher concepts, because nobody knew anything about it. And yet, when I read it, it, was, uh, it was, wasn't just a belief, it was a knowing. Um, yeah. yeah. Evolution follows consciousness and not the reverse as, as is commonly believed. And the other little quote down here talks about what's happening in our world. Um, your world is currently involved in the final throes of a role play of international proportion. Your politicians, world and country leaders, newscasters and numerous others connected with current affairs type programs or similar related categories are all playing important parts in this international drama. There is continual, gradually intensifying, focusing or hypnotising of the eager to be informed but disgusted public into a more frenetic, angry and fearful state. Right? Now my hope about that is perhaps we're leaving that behind so we can go into the new era. But that's a very uh, strong description of what's happened up till now. Um, and perhaps there's more to come, but I hope we get through it. Have you gone through it, have we? We're at the crossroads. At the yep, moment. it seems and like it. We will see a few events which I won't describe between now and the end of the year. And will, there will be a conscious shift in the world, uh, which will occur. It's already occurring. Mm -hmm. uh, because there is elements, our scientists are already are fully aware of this thing, but because they lack the spirituality, they can't explain it. Mm. And you will find uh, your DNA um, will, when you, there's 90% of your DNA which is, is, which is inactive at the moment. Mm. And that 90% is actually to do with your light body, your, uh, your uh, fifth dimensional shift yeah. of, of vibration which you will take on. So perhaps we've got through. You'll know you take this, old, you'll know these things that happen. You will wake up in the morning with vibrations going through your legs possibly or your back or you will you know feel like growing pains again like you had as a teenager you'll experience them as an adult so, All right, well, so that went off to the quack just realize that you are being brought up to speed to make the shift as the portal opens uh, yeah. around the end of this year will open up for about three years all right, well, um, that was a prophetic, quite a prophetic statement, which actually occurred. You know, we went through it, um, and we, we might be in those final throws through that threshold. If we make another, to go. Yeah, okay. Another very powerful um, influence was the, uh, the conversation with God books. We, were, um, we actually set up uh, study groups 10 years ago, uh, and, and this material is uh, very key to the ideas that we use to um, to go into into intentional community. There's a very good description of how highly evolved beings organise their societies, and it's certainly not the way we're doing it right now. Uh, but I'll show you that in a moment. Um, this is just my uh, another powerful influence, uh, and this is my personal quote on the reading cedars. Anastasia books. Um, there is something primal about these books, even the covers. 
stirring up feelings of great loss and something forgotten of how to live and a powerful yearning to revive our connection with nature. Right? So I can feel this within me. Right? And this, is, this is what's been driving me. And um, I've been given some resources in order to explore this fabulous path. Right? And so that's what I'm doing, I guess. So that's the, um, the presentations we had over the last month at Magpie House. And the first one, the Pyramid Code, uh, it actually corrects history scientifically. In other words, I think we, we were all taught in, in school that beyond a few thousand years, we were all primitive in Stone Age. Um, we know that's not true, right? and, and yet it's still in the mainstream curriculum. Uh, and there's a number of video, uh, videos um, that we showed, which I'm going to show you tonight. Well, the backdrop for this is, is our land up in New South Wales. Uh, brilliant sunset there. I'll throw that in. 